Hey everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Visions of Mana demo on the PlayStation 4. I wanted to check the demo out. The Mana series is always one that's interested me. I'm not the biggest Mana series guy. I played Seiken Densetsu 3 back on the Super Famicom, and it was so long ago, honestly. It was like one of the first Super NES emulated games I ever played, and it was like a fan translation of Seiken Densetsu 3, now known as Trials of Mana, and I absolutely loved it. We're going to be streaming Trials of Mana, three-player co-op, coming up later on this summer. It's going to be almost like a first playthrough, because like I said, I haven't played this game in probably almost 20 years. Anyways, I really remembered loving Seiken Densetsu 3, and then going back and playing Secret of Mana afterwards, and feeling quite disappointed. I wasn't a big fan of Secret of Mana. Uh, I've got a bunch of issues with it. The fact that your attacks miss all the time. You always have to wait and charge your attacks in order to really do any damage. And there's just a ton of issues I've always had with Secret of Mana. You can love it if you love it. I don't. And I've dabbled a little bit into Final Fantasy Adventure. I've been playing through that recently to kind of get into the Mana series a little bit more because Visions of Mana looks absolutely incredible. And like, I just finished saying I'm not like the biggest Mana series guy, but I do want to say how much I love the art style. I think it's absolutely gorgeous, and I think Visions of Mana did an excellent job at capturing this art style in an HD, 3D, fully realized environment. Like, absolutely, it looks absolutely stunning. But let's get into it. If you guys enjoy JRPG content, Dragon Quest content, reviews, top 10 videos, podcasts, please remember to like, subscribe, and turn notifications to all so you won't miss the next video. I'm trying to get to 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year, and it's only possible with your help. Another thing I wanted to mention before we get into the actual look at the demo here on the PlayStation 4 is Square Enix is doing a pledge to plant 25,000 new trees for Visions of Mana. They've partnered up with One Tree Planted. Basically, any Visions of Mana content you watch either here on YouTube or on Twitch, any like streams or videos videos any footage of the demo you watch is going to increase the amount of hours watched, which will increase the amount of trees planted. So this is a really cool thing they're doing. The Mana series is all about like the tree of Mana and like nature and all that. And I just think it's really cool that they're doing this and making a real world impact just by hanging out, watching YouTube videos and streams that you'd already be enjoying anyways. All right. So let's take a look at the game here. So we start off in this snowy area, and I feel like starting off in the snowy area is kind of like does a disservice to the visuals of the game and to like the mana art style in general. But I also feel like maybe they did this so that you get through the snow area, you'd learn some of the fundamentals without being in awe of your surroundings, and then once you get to the next area, then it's like lush, green, and vibrant, and you've got this kind of open area to explore. So I will say when I first started up the demo and you're just in this kind of one-way street, narrow pathway of this snow area, I felt like, oh no, this game's going to be pretty on rails. And then once you get to the first kind of open field area, it's a lot more open. There's a lot more exploration and stuff you can, you can do. But anyways, the first thing I wanted to talk about is I am generally not an action RPG guy. I'm quite terrible at like hack and slash games and stuff like that. But the combat in this is actually pretty enjoyable for me anyways. I'm mostly a turn-based JRPG guy. So action combat, not really my jam, but as I got used to it, the combat is like, it's got enough little bells and whistles to keep you interested and give you different things to try out in battle, different things to uh, turn the battle in your favor. It's also at the same time, not overcomplicated to where someone like me can't figure it out. So the combo system is very, very basic, which is honestly a godsend for people like me. Cause that's usually what turns me away from hack and slash games, like and action RPGs and stuff like that. I'm that guy that'll like, maybe be able to pull off the first two combos you learn in the game and just use those two combos for the rest of the game. The combos are pretty straightforward. You've got a heavy attack and a regular attack and you can kind of combo that heavy attack into your regular attack combo. If not, you could just, honestly, if you want, you could just spam that light attack and you'll do like a three to four piece combo. There is a little bar at the bottom. Now I'm going to be screwing up all the names here, but there's like a special move here. And if you hit L2, depending on what element you have equipped, you will do a special move based on that element. So most of the demo and because you start off with it, I was the wind element 
and it does like this big tornado attack and does a whole bunch of damage it groups all the enemies together does a crap load of damage it was fantastic the visuals look great and one thing i want to point out now that we're on the topic of the elements is in the demo you only have two elements kind of unlocked you have the wind element and the moon element and the elements are actually what determine your job class which is kind of cool depending on which element you have equipped to which character it changes their appearance and it changes their job class and some of the different job classes obviously change what kind of weapons you use so you'll see that i think his name's val the main character when he is the wind element job class he uses swords which is i think the same as his regular job class which is called like a guardian and then once you change him to the moon job class moon element job class for him it's like a, a tank kind of build. It's, I, I don't remember the name, but you have like a big spear and a big shield and stuff like that. And it's kind of cool. It, it plays almost like completely different. You have a different attack style. You're more defensive focused. You get new abilities. And that's the other thing. All the different elements have different abilities that you can get. So every time you level up, you get like these ability points or skill points and you put them into these kind of skill trees, I want to say. It's not really a tree because there's like no branches, but you've got like skill pathways, I guess. And each element has its own pathway. So if you change elements or job classes, it's kind of one and the same. Once you've been that job class, you can unlock skills or abilities in that element's pathway. So that's kind of cool. And some of those abilities you can use on no matter what job class you are afterwards so it encourages you to try all the different job classes and elements so that you can unlock new skills and abilities for all the different job classes and elements for each character and each character depending on what element they are it's not the same job class so at the start of the demo this cat dude morally he starts with the moon element equipped when you take the moon element off of him and put it on val you get a completely different job class than what Morley would have gotten. So it's kind of cool. Like each character is obviously going to have their own list of job classes that they have available to them. And the different elements are going to give you access to those different job classes for each character. So two characters are not going to be the same job class, even if they have the same element equipped. So that's kind of cool. It, it gives more uh, relevancy to having multiple different characters. It encourages you to try out all the different characters and all the different elements on those characters to find out which characters you like and what job classes and elements you like on each character. Just like in most RPGs, all the enemies have like element weaknesses and strengths and stuff like that. So some of the job classes will let you like imbue your weapon with a certain element. With Val, I like to use this one that gives me a lightning element or wind element on my sword. And when I'm attacking the enemies, if they're strong against lightning or wind, it's going to do no damage whatsoever. If they're weak against it, it'll do excess damage. So that's nice to have. And again, it encourages you to try all the different elements on all the different characters so that you can have that ability to change between lightning and then fire and then ice and stuff like that based on what kind of enemies you're facing off against. I've always loved the enemy designs in the Mana series and they just look fantastic in this game. And I got to say the movement in combat is really nice. Like I feel feel like I have complete control. There's an evade button that also doubles as like almost like a kip up or a break fall button, I think they call it. So if you get knocked back, you can like get up right away if you hit the dodge button. And it just feels really good to dodge multiple times to get out of the way and you just have free range of movement in battle. It never feels like clunky or stiff. You can also use the dodge button to close in on your enemies too, I found. So if an enemy's a little ways away, the run speed in combat is a little bit slower than it is when you're not in battle. So you can use that dodge button to dodge towards the enemy, closing the distance a lot quicker. There is a double jump, both in and out of battle, which makes it nice for facing off against airborne enemies. The combat feels nice, in my opinion. It's not too floaty, but it's nice and fluid, and it just, the controls feel tight which is nice. There's a lot of action RPGs and like hack and slash games where to me, the combat feels janky and it doesn't feel tight. This feels nice and tight. Now you have the ring system that was in uh, Trials of Mana and uh, Secret of Mana as well. It works really well in this game because it doesn't feel like you're taking forever to select what you need. It feels very streamlined. You also have kind of like two hotkey menus. If you hold like R1, you can set like attacks and items to your face buttons. And then if you hold L1, you can set attacks and items to your uh, D-pad. So it's really nice. You don't have to use the, the ring. If you have 
abilities or items you use quite frequently, you can just map them to these hotkeys and it speeds up the battle quite a bit compared to even like Trials of Mana. We've covered most of the combat, now let's get into the graphics. The graphics on the PS4 are honestly pretty darn good, but I gotta say this is where it comes down to the negativity here. There's a lot of chugging. Like, I'm not using a PlayStation 4 Pro, I'm just using a standard PS4, and this is why I wanted to make this video so you guys who just have a PS4 like myself can know how the game performs. I am not like a graphics whore by any means, I am not a frame rate junkie or anything like that. I play almost every JRPG in like 30 frames per second and it never bothers me, but this game chugs like crazy. Maybe they'll fix it because this is just the demo, but there is a lot of chugging. You can even see in like this outro little cutscene here after the boss fight that it just really chugs hard. And like I know there's a lot of like JRPGs that have good graphics on the Switch, and there's a lot of pop-in and stuff when you're running. Like, even Dragon Quest XI S had that, unfortunately. But the game still looked good, and it still performed good, at least up to my standards. But this has a lot of pop-in. Sometimes when you're running around the world map, if you're going too fast, the pop-in is just insane. But the frame rate will drop, like, big time to where it's, like, super noticeable. And, and sometimes when you're, like, running, you'll almost do, like, parkour over, like, fences and stuff. You'll have your double jump, and there's a lot of collectibles, which is nice. The world map does mark off areas where there might be something. So, be it a treasure, or some kind of a little side quest, or event, or something like that. I don't know if I like like this or not the 37 year old man in me likes it because I don't have a lot of time to play games anymore I do love exploration like exploration in video games especially in JRPGs is like the number two thing I love I think it's just from growing up playing Dragon Quest I love exploring these vast worlds and this game has a lot of exploration from what I can see but it also has these little markers that tells you there's going to be something there. So I don't know if I like knowing that there's something there before I even go there. At the same time, it's kind of nice not having to rub against every wall and go down every single path when I know that there's an item at the end of this path. The item placement's really good. It's down paths that you're going to probably want to go down anyways. So I don't know. It's kind of a catch-22. It kind of feels like hand-holding, but at the same time, like it kind of tells you where these items are going to go and encourages you to explore more that way anyways. I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you think about that. It took me a while to figure out how to save it, the demo. So there's like these uh, little sparkling things and if you talk to them a little a little tree sprout will come up and then you can save your game and then you can teleport between these little tree sprouts as like a quick travel method which is super nice. I always love when save points have that. But yeah it, it probably took me like an hour and a half to figure out that these little sparkly areas were where you save your game. But yeah, the biggest downside is just that frame rate drop, man. It is brutal. And this is coming from a guy that does not have, generally have issues with lower frame rates, as long as they're like consistent and stable. But this is not very stable. Like I said, hopefully it's just because it's a demo and they fix it in the full version. The art style is still carried through quite nicely. Like, the character art style, the, the world art style, the monster art style looks absolutely phenomenal. I love the designs of like the job classes for each of the characters and stuff like that. I like how they do side quests. The side quests are nice. They're cleanly marked. You don't have to like drop one side quest to start another one or anything like that. You can just take them all on, then head back out into the field and get them all done. The boss fights are nice. There's one boss fight in the demo and it felt really good. I was over leveled because I'm terrible at action RPG. If you hit them in like their weak spots, it'll do critical damage and then you can kind of plan your way around that And like I said the dodging is so nice in this that even when the enemy is like pouring it all on you It's really if, if you're paying attention It's really easy to just kind of get out of the way and avoid damage and I honestly did better against I think the boss than I did against mobs because the mobs there's so many of them and they start surrounding you and the boss it's kind of like one big dude you just got to watch out for his big attacks and stuff like that he did call in some mobs during the boss fight but we were able to easily take care of him i really hope they add multiplayer to this 
I know the developers said that there is no multiplayer, but it's not off the table to add later. I really hope they add it. To me, that's like this one of the strong points of the Mana series is having that multiplayer aspect. There's not a lot of JRPGs that have multiplayer, and the Mana series always does such a good job of its multiplayer. So yeah, that's about it, guys. I hope this helped you understand the game and how it works, the combat, the mechanics, the exploration, the world map, the art style, and the graphics and performance. If you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful, please remember to like, subscribe, and turn notifications on all so you won't miss the next one. And I'll see you guys in the next video.